the headlines of this hour on BTP News. National Assembly opens plenary session to discuss socio-economic situation. Later on, Vietnam marks 10-year journey of participation in the UN peacekeeping missions. In a world news, Malaysia unveils plan to become a global chip hub. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Good morning, it is currently 8 a.m. local time and you're tuning into 30 minutes of VTV News. Adi Dinh Le with the latest updates. Now, the National Assembly held a plenary session on Wednesday to discuss Vietnam's socio-economic situation and state budget in 2023 and review the first few months of 2024. While acknowledging the positive results, deputies also proposed many solutions to promote growth for both this year and beyond. Also at the discussion session, Deputy Prime Ministers, Ministers and Industry Heads participated in responding to proposals raised by deputies. National Assembly deputies expressed their appreciation for the efforts of the entire political system and the government and the Prime Minister's directions in stabilizing the macroeconomy, ensuring major economic equilibrium, creating favorable conditions for production and business as well as ensuring people's lives. To further promote this, deputy suggested increasing enterprises' ability to absorb capital, speeding up the disbursement of public investment capital and turning the manufacturing and processing industries into important driving forces for economic development. Public investment capital so far has reached 22.34 percent of the assigned plan, the highest level in the last four years, thanks to the drastic direction of the government and the prime minister. This is an encouraging result. We will turn this into a driving force by removing difficulties in mechanisms and administrative procedures to attract public investment capital and activate private investment capital. I recommend that the government strengthen trade promotion, diversify export markets, support businesses to overcome labor shortages, research policies to increase businesses' ability to access capital. The business community has reported many positive signs in May. The number of newly established businesses has reached 20,000 per month and in a total of five months, this figure has surpassed the number of businesses withdrawing from the market. The government will continue to introduce policies to support businesses into the future. Deputies also highly appreciated the government's effort to address the turbulence of the gold market and exchange rates while advocating for more fundamental solutions into the future. The state bank has increased the supply of gold to the market through many solutions, including the recent gold bidding. However, after nine auctions, we saw that the price difference was not reduced as expected, so we decided to hold the bidding to evaluate the situation, identify the cause, and develop a new plan to start implementation next week, in the hope to further reduce gold prices. To address the backlog in dealing with complaints and problems from the people and business in some localities. Deputies propose that the government continue to provide extensive guidance on promoting civil servants' performance. Also at the plenary session, deputies also commented on notable issues in the fields of culture and society. Take a look. Deputies express their appreciation for the achievements in ensuring gender equality. However, the increase in the gender imbalance in live births remain high at 112 boys compared to 100 girls in the last year. This calls for solutions to limit emerging social problems, especially as it forecasts that by 2034, there will be 1.5 million more men than women. Deputies also propose amending the current personal and family circumstance deduction level and increasing funding for literary and artistic activities. 
The current deduction for dependents, which currently stands at 4.4 million Vietnamese dong per month, no longer fits the current reality, causing disadvantages for taxpayers. And in general, currently the deduction level is not suitable for a country with a low average income level. We propose that the government submit the personal income tax law by the end of October this year for approval in May of next year. In response to deputies' feedback, in October 2015, the National Assembly Standing Committee included a program to develop and amend the personal income tax law and pass it at the May 2016 session. At the end of this year, the Standing Committee has decided to consider and pass it next May. We will ask for opinions from deputies, the people, and ministries when developing this law to make appropriate regulations. Deputies also expressed their concern and required urgent solutions to address the situation of drought and saltwater intrusion. The Mekong Delta region has identified its core issue is the water sourced from upstream. We have issued the master plan for sustainable development of the Mekong Delta, as well as many specific policies and action plans across about 60 projects. There is now a regional association regulation, which is the basis for localities to choose the most pressing problems to solve. In conclusion, at the Wednesday plenary session, 57 deputies gave comments and three participated in debates. The Standing Committee would direct relevant agencies to collect and study the deputies' comments to include them in the resolution of the meeting. Prime Minister Phan Ming Ching had a phone conversation on Wednesday in Hanoi with his Singaporean counterpart, Prime Minister Lawrence Wong. During the phone call, the Vietnamese Prime Minister warmly congratulated Prime Minister Wong on becoming the fourth Prime Minister of Singapore. During the phone call, both the Prime Ministers praised the network of Vietnam-Singapore Industrial Park or VSIP, a symbol of successful economic cooperation. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Chính said Vietnam is keen on replicating the VSIP model and will create favorable conditions for more new generation VSIPs to operate effectively in Vietnam. The Prime Minister proposed that the two sides strengthen defense and security cooperation, including setting up the National Data Center, boost financial cooperation, education, training, tourism, and people-to-people -people exchanges to improve the common understanding between the two peoples. The Singapore Prime Minister affirmed that he will continue to promote delegation exchanges, high-level contacts at all levels, and bilateral cooperation mechanisms, especially the annual meeting between the two Prime Ministers. He added Singapore wishes to work with Vietnam to effectively implement the framework agreement on connecting the two economies and Vietnam-Singapore Green Economy Digital Economy Partnership in green energy and carbon credits. He also said he would ask his ministers to continue encouraging Singaporean businesses to expand new investments in Vietnam with a focus on high-tech, the digital circular economies, clean energy, semiconductors and artificial intelligence. In an official dispatch signed on May the 28th, Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching has ordered the engagement of the whole political system to accelerate site clearance for key transport projects so that these can be completed as scheduled. He says transport infrastructure is an important pillar that creates new development spaces and socio-economic engines and helps ensure defense security. Vietnam aims to have some 3,000 kilometers of expressway constructed by 2025 and 5,000 kilometers by 2050. However, slow progress in site clearance has delayed the pace of several projects. For these transport projects to meet the schedule, Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching asked relevant organizations to directly meet local residents to make timely responses to their legitimate complaints and petitions, build resettlement areas, and ensure the lives and productivity of relocated people. According to the National Load Dispatch Center, due to the strong recovery of the economy, the demand for electricity and electricity load in the last six months of this year will reach over 313 billion kilowatts hour, an increase of more than 14% over the same period last year. 
to ensure sufficient supply for production in the immediate future, especially amid the peak summer heat season. Many solutions have been implemented by both the electricity industry and localities. In the first five months of the year, this enterprise consumed nearly 200 million kilowatt per hour of electricity. Having a stable power supply will allow this business to achieve 20 percent growth in orders in the latter half of the year. We have coordinated with Tenghua Electricity Company to provide us with a stable power source using two 110 kilovolt lines from Ningbing to Tenghua. With stable power, we can provide good service for production and business. According to 2024's plan, Tenghua province will need 7.4 billion kilowatt per hour of commercial electricity for production. To stabilize the supply, businesses have been working with the electricity industry since the beginning of the year. The company has directly worked and informed our consumers, especially FDI enterprises and supporting enterprises within the plan to ensure electricity supply in 2024 and Directive 20 of the Prime Minister in saving electricity, so that they can be more proactive in production planning and the organization business activities. Thanks to proactive coordination from the local electricity industry, our factory is operating safely and stably. We are committed to using the correct capacity and load chart registered in the electricity purchase contract. According to the National Load Dispatch Center, in the second quarter and this year's summer season, daily electricity will continue to increase sharply. In the last six months of 2024, it is expected that the entire national electricity system will use more than 161 billion kilowatt hours of electricity. To ensure this supply capacity, Vietnam Electricity as well as our center will mobilize resources optimally. According to a report from Vietnam Electricity, the electricity output of the entire system reached over 130 billion kilowatt hour in the first five months of the year. It is forecast that the electricity demand of the entire economy this year will increase by 9.6 percent. Coming up next on BCB News. Vietnam marks 10-year journey of participation in the UN peacekeeping missions. Vietnamese cuisine in top 100 most attractive street foods in Asia. Welcome back to VTV News Live. Now the International Day of United Nations Peacekeepers falls on the 29th of May each year, serving as a poignant tribute to the men and women who have served in UN peacekeeping operations around the world. Although Vietnam participated in peacekeeping missions later than many other countries, Vietnam has been highly appreciated by the United Nations for its significant contributions over the past 10 years. The Vietnam's peacekeeping forces have left a good impression on leaders of missions, commanding officers of military forces, and international colleagues. On May the 7th, the Vietnam Corps of Engineers held the Highway Smart Cam inauguration ceremony in ABA. The Smart Cam project at the highway base is the first of its kind undertaken by the Vietnam Military Construction Engineering Contingent. Celebrating this day, on the day of inaugurating this camp, smart camp, is synonymous to inaugurating victory. Bentu, a city in South Sudan, has been in a constant state of conflict for many years. The Vietnam Peacekeeping Force has coordinated with other departments at the United Nations Mission to provide health care and medicine for local people. I think I'm blessed that uh, I fall, fell into your hands. Okay. You first diagnosed 
my problem very correctly and then you treated it very rightly, especially your nurses. To help poor people improve their lives, Vietnamese peacekeepers in ABA taught locals to grow vegetables and raise other crops. They also helped locals upgrade roads, build schools and offer free classes for children. Their hard work and efforts have finally paid off and have been highly appreciated by local people. I'm very, very happy, very happy and grateful. I really thank you very much, Vietnam. You have really shown us a wonderful thing that we'll never forget you. We'll still be, you'll be with us. Yes. We'll carry you in our hearts. Vietnamese peacekeepers are willing to help local residents anywhere, at any time. We hope local people can change their lives and that they will have a brighter future. Despite the language barriers, the two words Vietnam have always been taken by local people into their hearts. In Guangnam province, home to nine mountainous districts, many villages remain isolated by rough terrain. Local residents have resorted to temporary bridges for daily commutes. Recently, social organizations have joined forces to eliminate hundreds of these hazardous crossings, building safer routes to school for children and more efficient transport of essentials and agricultural goods. Cha Kang commune is the most disadvantaged locality in Nam Cha Mi district. Dozens of students from Bak Bin village crossed makeshift bridges to attend school every day. At the same time, hundreds of households depend on them for medical visits and supplies. Local authorities have mobilized support from social organizations and the local community to construct sturdier bridges. <laughs> We encourage local people to help with the on-site delivery of construction materials. It only took three days. Each new bridge costs nearly 4,000 U.S. dollars, completed in just a week. They have transformed the way of life in Cha Kang commune. Students now enjoy a safer, shorter trip to school and transporting necessities and agricultural products to and from the commune has become more convenient. The rainy season no longer sparks fears of bridge collapse. I remember having to stay home during rainy days because it was impossible to cross the submerged bridge. Now I can maintain my attendance. I'm really happy that a good bridge has been built. We have removed almost all makeshift bridges in the vicinity and built new ones entirely thanks to community source support. Over the past few years, in addition to state projects, social organizations have financed nearly 50 bridge construction projects in Nam Cha Mi district alone. This program has solved the isolation problem that affects residential areas during heavy rains. It has shortened travel distances and accelerated efforts to combat poverty in Guangnam's mountainous regions. Bao Chuk, a small village in the town of Fuxin, Ninh Thuận province, is internationally known for pottery production. The village of the Cham people is one of the oldest pottery villages in Southeast Asia. Little is known about the traditional methods of the production process, how locals understand the genres of productions, and the belief systems that have been integral to the process for the past several hundred years. Late afternoon in Bauchuk village, locals are returning home on their bullock carts after a day collecting clay. Transporting the clay home is not easy as the process takes a lot of time and hard work. The Cham people here often collect clay at Nu Lang Field. The natural characteristics of this clay source is extraordinary in that it has high degree of adhesion. Furthermore, the supply never runs low. Without this clay source, locals wouldn't have been able to build and maintain their good reputation for their village as it is today. After the clay is collected, the supply regenerates after nearly a year. That's why we have taken the clay from this source for centuries. Before the rice growing season, villagers utilize the clay at Nulang Field as a raw material for their pottery making process. 
to retrieve the clay, they dig holes 0.5 to 0.7 meter deep. The holes will be filled after several months, and rice can be planted in these holes. This clay sauce is a gift from God, so generations of the Chen people have utilized the clay here. If you collect sand in a place, the sand dune will become smaller, but a new length field. The clay sauce always regenerates no matter how much clay we take. The stories of the clay sauce in Baochuk village have amazed numerous tourists who came here to enjoy the Cham people's traditional craft with unique skills and techniques passed down through generations. I was very surprised that it's the first time I have learned that the clay source here can regenerate. Many people believe that Cham people's traditional pottery methods have consistently depended on natural forces, relying upon the proper balance of wind, sun and rain. Therefore, Baochuk products characterize the life, culture and beliefs of locals. According to the World Health Organization, or WHO, drowning is one of the leading causes of death among children aged 5 to 14. Teaching children to swim is considered the primary solution to prevent drowning. For the past four years, a special swimming class at Angel's Shelter in Ho Chi Minh City has been making significant efforts to prevent drowning by providing disadvantaged children with the opportunity to learn and practice swimming. Nearly 100 children at the Angel Shelter participated in these classes every Monday and Wednesday. These free classes are conducted by a group of coaches who are former national swimming champions. The initiative is fueled not only by community support, but also by the spirit of dedication and sharing within the community. Five delicious Vietnamese dishes have just been listed among Asia's top 100 most appealing street foods. The list was published by the international culinary website Taste Atlas. The foods highlighted are bread, pho, broken rice, spring rolls and bánh xèo. This is not the first time Vietnamese cuisine has been named among the most famous dishes in Asia and the world. Recently, the famous culinary website Haste Atlas has also announced that Bang Mi ranked first in the 100 best sandwiches in the world with a rating of 4.6 out of 5 stars. Last year, in a poll of the 550 most attractive street foods in Asia, CNN listed traditional Vietnamese cuisine as having three dishes on this list, which are bread, pho, and iced coffee. <laughs> Coming up next in our world news, Malaysia unveils plan to become a global chip hub. And later on, let's explore the heart of the Azerbaijan through a trip to Baku. Now moving on to our world news, Malaysia is targeting at least 500 billion ringgit or 107 billion US dollars in investment for its semiconductor industry. Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim said on Tuesday as the Southeast Asian country looks to position itself as a global manufacturing hub. Under the National Semiconductor Strategy, the Malaysian government will allocate at least 25 billion ringgit or about 5.3 billion US dollars over the next five to ten years to support talents and local companies. The new initiative would train 60,000 high-skilled local engineers and establish at least 10 local semiconductors firms. This investment source mainly from sovereign wealth funds will focus on talent development in chip-making fields such as design, packaging and testing. The Malaysian Prime Minister announced the plan at the Semicon Southeast Asia 2024, which kicked off in Kuala Lumpur on Tuesday. The U.S. lifted some financial restrictions against Cuba on Tuesday in a move designed to boost private businesses on the island. The measures will allow independent entrepreneurs to open and access U.S. bank accounts online to support their businesses. According to the U.S. Treasury Department, these regulatory amendments update and clarify authorizations in support of Internet-based services to promote Internet freedom in Cuba, support independent Cuban private sector entrepreneurs, and expand access to certain financial services for the Cuban people. 
Responding to the U.S. move, the Cuban authorities said the steps were limited and will do little to ease the embargo or sanctions. Colombia's Congress has passed a bill banning bullfighting after seven years of failed attempts, despite political and social groups opposing the move, citing its cultural value. The lower house gave the bill green light with a 93-2 to two vote, backing a bullfighting ban from 2027. The country's constitutional court has recently urged Congress to issue a definitive regulation on bullfighting. The law would bring Colombia in line with other countries in the region that have banned bullfighting, including Brazil, Chile, Argentina, Uruguay and Guatemala. Situated on the shores of the Caspian Sea, Baku is known for its stunning architecture, including the iconic flame towers and the beautiful Old City, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The city is a vibrant hub of culture, with numerous museums, theaters, and art galleries showcasing Azerbaijan's rich heritage. Old City, a fortress on the shores of the Caspian Sea. This is where Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan, began, ships carrying goods from east to west moored here. Caravans traveling along the Great Silk Road passed through. These streets and walls carry the memory of the beginning of time. The old city is a unique monument. This is the place where Baku began. Already in the 19th century, during the oil boom, Baku grew and expanded far beyond the fortress walls. The Azerbaijani name of the site is a Cherishekar which stands for Inner City. There are many caravanserais, palaces, mosques and baths here. The Palace of the Shirvanshahs, the Maiden Tower and the Muhammad Mosque are historical monuments of a global scale. Shirvanshah's palace complex uh, it, uh, amazes uh, the tourists and uh, get them struck uh, with them, uh, it's with its magnific magnificence, uh, with them, uh, with them um, delicate uh, uh, stone carving work, uh, stone inscription, ornaments, and with a uh, light shadow effects caused by the uh, succession of uh, vertical horizontal stone lines. Today, the old city has many hotels and large crowds of tourists walking the streets. They are attracted by historical monuments, numerous restaurants, and souvenir shops. Our restaurant is in a historical building. Our visitors have the opportunity to get acquainted with the history and also appreciate our cuisine. Archaeological excavations have continued in the old city, historical artifacts are being discovered, and sometimes even the remains of buildings are found. Up next, let's have a look at the weather forecast. And that is all that we have for this hour on VTV News. To rewatch our program, you can access our website, our YouTube channel, or download our mobile app, VTV Go, for more. Thank you for watching, and goodbye for now.